So, today we are going to talk about the effects of the atmosphere on observations especially in optical. We are going to split this in three separate videos this is part 1 stars are not where they seem to be. So, the effect we are going to talk about is refraction the atmosphere has a refractive index it is it is very close to 1, but it is not exactly 1 the refractive index of the atmosphere at standard temperature and pressure is 1.000273 this of course changes as the with altitude as the pressure and temperature and humidity of the air changes. So, what happens is that as light from a star enters the atmosphere it gets bent and because it is entering a optically dense medium it gets bent towards the normal and what what happens is that if you extrapolate the light backwards the observed position of the star will appear closer towards the zenith it will appear to be higher up in the sky. So, let us calculate how much that effect is we are going to talk about the plane parallel approximation in which we, we are only going to consider stars which are at small zenith angles. So, the atmosphere can be approximated as a slab of parallel uh, medium with some refractive index n which depends of course, on the temperature relative humidity and so on. Now, let let us say that the starlight is entering at some actual zenith angle zeta and it gets bent by a small angle delta zeta. So, your observed zenith angle is zeta minus delta zeta. Now, from Snell's law we know that n 1 sin zeta is equal to n 2 sin zeta minus delta zeta and n 1 and n 2 are the refractive indices of the two media for vacuum n 1 obviously will be 1 for n 2 we are going to substitute n. We can expand this expression here with using the standard trigonometric identity sin a minus b is equal to sin a cos b minus cos a sin b. Now, we can also substitute the refractive index of space to be n 1 is equal to 1 and the refractive index of the atmosphere n 2 is equal to n and we can assume that delta zeta is going to be very small which it is. Now, we can expand this further and show that sin zeta is equal to n times sin zeta cos delta zeta minus cos zeta sin delta zeta and then we can we note that cos delta zeta is approximately equal to 1 and sin delta zeta is approximately equal to delta zeta. So, we can simplify this further and we can get the expression delta zeta is equal to n minus 1 tan zeta. Now, this of course, is in units of the zenith angle zeta we can also substitute it in terms of the altitude which is 90 minus delta zeta. So, we can calculate this as delta zeta is equal to n minus 1 cot a where a is equal to 90 degrees or pi by 2 minus zeta. Now, this of course, is valid for fairly small zenith angles this is this expression is generally valid only for zeta less than pi by 4 where you are above a certain cone of the atmosphere or equivalently the altitude is greater than uh, pi by 4 or 45 degrees. Now, the value of n of course, depends on the temperature of the air the pressure of the air and so on and you, there are many numerical values which have been used one of the formulas that has been given for example, from Comstock in 1890 is that r which is the refraction in arc seconds is a function of the atmospheric pressure temperature and the altitude. There are of course, more complicated formulas which work closer to the horizon these all of these formulas will work only at fairly high altitudes. Now, if you go closer to the horizon refraction is extremely complicated the plane parallel appro approximation does not work anymore. And because light is passing through many many layers of air you can have a lot of bending in fact, ob objects which are even below the horizon can appear to be above the horizon because of this at standard room temperature this effect can be as large as 30 arc minutes. So, the entire sun's disk can be below the horizon, but it will appear to be above the horizon. If you go to extremely low temperatures such as for example, in Antarctica uh, effects as large as 3 to 4 degrees have been observed. Now, the other thing to note is that the shape gets distorted for example, the top edge of the sun will get refracted less than the bottom edge of the sun by about 5 arc minutes. So, when you observe the sun close to sunset it will appear to be flattened. Sunrise and sunset times can also change by orders of a few minutes depending on the temperature and relative humidity of that day. 
Now, this effect is also wavelength dependent. The atmosphere not just acts like a slab of glass, but it also acts like a prism. The refractive index of air changes with wavelength and similar to glass and water, refractive index at blue is higher than the refractive index at yellow, it is higher than the refractive index at red and that is higher than 1. So, here you can see a plot of the refractive index as a function of wavelengths. It is much higher towards the blue wavelengths than towards the red wavelengths. What that means is that refraction is larger for blue light than red light. So, the blue part of the star will appear closer to the horizon than the red part of the star and you can see this very nicely in this image here taken of a double star close to the horizon. You can see that the top part of the star is bluer and the bottom part of the star is redder. This is because the images of the blue and red light are slightly separated. Now, telescopes have to use atmospheric dispersion corrector or adjustable prisms to correct for this effect to prevent blurring. So, what did we learn today? We learned that the earth, the atmosphere's refractive index is a significant contributor to the positions of stars. You have to correct observed positions with the refractive index to get the actual positions. This effect will cause stars to be observed closer to the zenith, they will be lifted upwards and this is affected by the air temperature, relative humidity and the pressure at that moment. This effect is also wavelength dependent which is called dispersion.